so hi everyone i'm jay and today we are going to see the block diagram of the 8086 microprocessor you can see that on the screen this is the block diagram of 8086 the block diagram of the 8086 is divided into two parts the first part is known as bus interface unit and the second part is known as execution unit let's see the components which are present in the bus interface unit in the bus interface unit there are different registers the first one is code segment then there is a stack segment data segment extra segment and the instruction pointer now this segment register is used to store the starting address of the segment what is segment for the 8086 the memory is divided into four segment code segment data segment stack segment and the extra segment so this segment register is used to store the starting address of the particular segment size of this all registers are 16 bit then there is an instruction pointer the function of the instruction pointer is same as stack pointer you remember stack pointer in the 8085 right it keeps track of the next instruction to be fetched so the function of the instruction pointer is same the next part is prefetch queue the size of this queue is 6 this queue is used to prefetch 6 instruction so when one instruction is being executed the next 6 instruction will be stored in this prefetch queue the next part of the 8086 block diagram is the execution unit you can see that in the execution unit there are different registers there are four general purpose registers a b c and d size of each register is 16 bit if you want to store 8 bit data you can divide this 16 bit register into two 8 bit register so you can see that register a x can be divided into a high and a low size of a high is 8 bit and a low is again 8 bit together it is known as ax that is 16 bit the next general purpose register is bx cx and dx next registers is stack pointer base pointer source index and the destination index stack pointer is used to store the starting address of the stack then there is a base pointer it will used to it is used to store the base address then source index and the destination index the next block that you can see is the alu alu means arithmetic and logical unit so using this block processor can perform all the arithmetic and the logical operations and the next part is the operands and flag for the 8085 you remember there are total five flag bits for the 8086 the size of the flag register is 16 bit but not all bits is used as flag only few flags are added to the flags available for the 8085 let's see the flag register for the 8086 so you can see that this is the flag register of the 8086 some flags were present in the 8085 and some flags are new to us let's discuss all the flags the first flag is carry flag you know that when we are performing any arithmetic operation and when the carry is generated the carry flag will be set next flag is the parity flag so when we perform any arithmetic and logical operation and in the answer if total number of ones are even in that case the parity flag will be set if the total number of ones are odd in that case the parity flag will be reset then there is a auxiliary flag auxiliary flag means when we are performing any arithmetic operation and the bit is transferred from the d3 to d4 or you can say that the carry is transferred from the lower nibble to higher nibble in that case the auxiliary flag will be set then there is a zero flag so after performing any arithmetic and logical operation if in the answer all the bits are zero in that case the zero flag will be set otherwise it will be reset then there is a sign flag so if you are performing any arithmetic and logical operation and in the answer if 
the MSB is 1, in that case the sign flag is set. It means the answer is negative. And if the MSB is 0, it means the answer is positive. So, in that case the sign flag will be reset. The next flag is trap flag. When this flag is set, the microprocessor will be work in the debug mode. The next flag is the interrupt enable. Using this flag, all the interrupts in the 8086 can be enabled. The next flag is the direction flag. If you remember for the 8085, the value of the program counter is incremented by 1 after execution of every instruction. So by default, the program counter is incremented, right? For the 8086, you can decide whether the program counter should be incremented or decremented. So when the value of the direction flag is 1, in that case, the program counter will be incremented after execution of every instruction. And when the value of the direction flag is 0, in that case, the value of the program counter will be decremented after execution of every instruction. The next flag is overflow flag. Overflow flag means if you are performing any arithmetic operation, for example, if you are adding two negative number and you are getting answer that is positive. If you are adding two positive number and the answer that you are getting is negative. So it means the answer is wrong, right? So in such cases, the value of the overflow flag will be set. The remaining bits of the flag register of the 8086 are used for development purpose. So they are not defined yet but in the future there is a possibility that uh, some flags can be added. Now you can see that on the screen this is the memory bank of the 8086. Like I just said that for the 8086 memory the whole memory is divided into four segment. There is a stack segment, there is a data segment, there is a code segment and there is a extra segment. Stack segment is used as stack code segment is used to store the instruction, data segment is used to store data and extra segment is used to store some extra or temporary data. For each segment there is a dedicated register. So you can see that there are four register which are named as extra segment, code segment, stack segment and data segment. Size of each register is 16 bit and this register is used to store the starting address of each segment. Now if you pay attention the size of one segment register is 16 bit but the address of the segment register is 20 bit. How we can point 20 bit memory location using the 16 bit address? So the last 4 bit are the hardwired. Last 4 bits are by default 0. Okay. So you can see that the value of the extra segment is 7000. It means it is pointing to the starting address of the extra segment in the memory. The next segment is the code segment. The starting address of the code segment is 3000. So you can see that in the memory where the code segment is available, it is pointing at the starting part of the code segment. Then there is a stack segment. Again, it is pointing at the starting address of the stack segment. And data segment register, it is pointing at the starting address of the data segment. Now the 8086 microprocessor is 16 bit microprocessor. What is the meaning of 16 bit microprocessor? 16 bit microprocessor means it can process 16 bit data at a time. So the size of the data bus is 16 bit. For the 8086 the size of the address bus is 20 bit. So you can access 2 raised to 20 memory location. Now if you want to interface the memory with the 8086, you can connect address bus and the data bus to the memory. So there is a one possibility that you can connect the data bus and the address bus direct to the memory. You can also divide the 16 bit data into two part. So you can also interface two memory with the 8086 microprocessor and you can see that in the figure, there are two memory which is interfaced with the microprocessor. The memory on the right side it is a even memory and the memory on the left side it is a odd memory. So all the even data will be stored in the even memory and all the odd data will be stored in the odd memory. 
you can see that the data bus is connected to the both memory d0 to d7 is connected to e1 memory and the d8 to d15 is connected to odd memory so at a time we can store or at, at a time we can receive data of 8 bit only you can see that in the even memory the a0 pin is connected so when the value of a0 is 0 in that case the even memory will be selected and when the value of BHE is 0, in that case the odd memory is selected. And you can see that the A1 to A19 is the address bus which is connected to both memory. So this is how the memory interfacing is done for the microprocessor 8086. And I think this is it for this session. If you still have any doubt, you can ask me in the comment section. Thank you so much.